Hello artists and welcome back to another video. Um, before I start the subject, which will be my top five favorite artists from the RCA 2020 MA show, I'm going to be focusing on the painting MA. I would just like to say thank you to Rebecca, who uh, gave me the idea for the reference video. She says, thank you for taking on board my video suggestion. This was really useful. Glad you found that useful. And um, now I'm going to give my Instagram shout out because I actually got a couple of people tagging me in their Instagram story. So if you would like your Instagram account to be featured or like a shout out on my video, then just take a print screen or picture of this video and tag me in your Instagram story with a chance to get a shout out in a future video. So this week's shout out goes to uh, Drain Java Arts. Uh, you can see his account, I'll put it on the screen, and uh, I really love his color combinations of pink and blue, because I love me some pink, I love me some blue, and I, I genuinely think it's probably my favorite color combination. So moving on to now the RCA top five favorite artists. So currently they have their online exhibition for the master's kind of uh, graduate show online because of COVID-19. So, which it kind of benefits me because I'm in China, I can't really go and see the show. So I think it's kind of, uh, I get access to it online so I can, I can do a video about it. Apology in advance if I butcher any of the names um, because I have a history for now butchering names on YouTube. But um, I'm gonna talk about maybe about two pieces per artist, uh, look at my favorite pieces from those artists and I will put all the links in the description to the show and also the artists that I've featured specifically. So the first artist I'm going to speak about is my number one favorite, and that is Shoto Blesset. And um, he kind of touches on the idea of the sublime in relation to nature, and also how humans are having now an impact on kind of nature and kind of the context of how we live in nature and how we feel like we maybe possibly control nature when it might not actually be the case. But um, you, can, you can see the work that I'm putting on top now. He has these fantastic kind of, uh, you could say, in very interesting landscapes, like kind of a mix between some form of architecture, botanical garden structures, and also referencing, I feel like, classical landscape language. Um, when, I feel like his light and the way he kind of paints the mountains and trees, it, it's just very Turner-esque. Um, a lot like JMW Turner. This piece is actually my favorite of his just because I feel like the saturation, the saturation of that turquoise is just such a beautiful tone. And you have such an amazing kind of depth with that waterfall in the foreground and kind of, you can see him pushing back those mountains, but then the light, the light falling on the tips of those mountains is also, ooh, it's a delight. The second student I'm gonna feature is actually Xu Yang. Um, she, um, she was actually a classmate of mine at University of the Arts Wimbledon, uh, University of the Arts London Wimbledon um, in my painting MA. So uh, congratulations to her for some uh, really good, uh, some really good work. Uh, she kind of touches on the theme of identity and bringing fantasy into life. Um, bear in mind, I'm not gonna go into detail with kind of everyone's concepts. You can kind of go and read on the website if you want to get more of an idea. I'm just maybe just generalizing the theme of what they're kind of presenting and interesting. Obviously, what they've presented on the website is far more detailed. So go and check that out if you do have any specific or uh, you're drawn to any specific pieces. But I feel like this is this unicorn piece is just a, a painting that really pops. Uh, one of the I, th I think when it, this is this is a painting that goes really well with the concept because as I said, she's interested in this idea of bringing fantasy into real life. And you can see she's painted the frame and then painted the tail kind of coming out of the frame almost as if the horse is coming into reality and uh, <laughs> almost uh, gives me a kind of Harry Potter vibes with the, um, with the paintings moving and stuff. As for her second piece, I actually really liked, she's got a collection of, I think this is charcoal, possibly charcoal drawing. Um, but it seems like a combination of animal and object, but kind of quite ghostly. And I do like some nice texture in her work. So the next artist I'm featuring is called Betsy Kilpatrick. Now I'm actually gonna read a little bit of her concept just because 
I find it a little bit difficult maybe to word in a general sense, but there's a, there's a good sentence here where she says, I am interested in creating an essence to my work that offers a familiar sense of connection with nature, similar to water or organic forms, a moment caught in the midst of its own becoming, a movement or flow. So the idea I kind of get from this is her work is quite a lot about process and maybe working with the elements, particularly kind of water and this idea of flow. But I found her kind of these abstract pieces. I just love the this build up of texture and the kind of the subtlety. Um, I feel like this is just someone who's really found their kind of maybe painting language and um, just good work. I, uh, I do appreciate good abstract work. Moving on to another abstract artist called Ella McVeigh. So my understanding is um, she has kind of maybe classical references such as Titian and the old masters because she has some kind of writing next to her work where I'm not sure if it's like poet. I kind of, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm an artist. I've done an art degree. I kind of, <laughs> I'm a bit stupid sometimes. I find it difficult to understand things that people are references or when people put like poetry and stuff next to their work. But um, my understanding is that she has some kind of classical references and then builds these abstract compositions from those classical references. I feel like they do have a lot of movement in them. Um, I, I, I do enjoy kind of her mark making and this, this kind of creation of space where you've got these, where you have these areas with a lot of contrast and I don't know, you, you get, did you get what I'm trying to say? Just, just enjoy, enjoy the artwork. And my final, <laughs> my final artist, this is just a, a one, a, a feature of one work, which is a banger, an absolute banger for the end. And there's a name I'm probably going to butcher, but Sei Yun Huang. I hope that is um, <clears throat> the uh, correct pronunciation. Um, I think that's Korean. I think that's a Korean name. I'm better with Chinese names now that I've been in China for a while. Um, but uh, here we go. Are you ready? Drum roll, please. Boom, 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 boom. Painting. <laughs> now for any of you to possibly understand uh, what painting is, but she did a, she did a, a painting painting. Um, painting was like uh, this dumb slang word that basically I grew up with in kind of this terrible secondary school I went to. Um, but it was kind of like what all of the, if, if, if a guy saw an attractive girl or something, it would be like, yo, what's up painting but now um, even me and my friends still use this ironically just to describe things that we like so for example uh, one of my best mates if he sees like uh, one of my paintings that he really like he'd be like that's a painting or something like this um, and she's just taken it and made it into a painting <laughs> and I sent this to one of my best mates and he, he I was just like should we should we inquire about buying this um because, yeah, uh, this is just a, a throwback to, I guess, uh, teenagehood. But um, that's, my, uh, that's my final feature, the, the painting, painting. Maybe people only from London will maybe understand this one. But I think it's a good uh, light note to end on. Remember to comment and also tag me in an Instagram story if you'd like a uh, chance for a shout out. I appreciate you watching this video. I hope um, it does as well as my previous RCA video. Uh, thank you for any, all of the actually RCA students who have reached out to me since my last RCA video. I'm sure a few of you might be watching this. Um, so I appreciate really all of, I've had kind of email comments, DMs from uh, RCA students kind of give me, giving me some advice and kind of insight into the courses and the application process. So a huge thank you to those and a huge thank you to all of you guys who keep supporting me, what I'm doing here. And I hope I've given you like a, an, uh, what, am I, what am I saying? A uh, direction to go in to do something on the internet right now. Go check out the show, basically. That's what I'm trying to say. Go and check out the RCA show. There's some good work there. And um, 
I, I hope that you've enjoyed this video. So don't forget to subscribe, like for more artistic content and uh, feel free to DM me on Instagram or ask any questions below in the comment section. And here is my awkward... Bye.